uh, John is going to talk today about uh, measuring campaigns performance like a boss but for the boss. Just to uh, kind of give a little little bit more about myself, um, you mentioned that I'm, I'm co-founder of Raven Tools. I'm also uh, a big geek. I, I really love SEO, particularly technical SEO, and, uh, and my idea of uh, relaxing is uh, making a custom WordPress theme and just optimizing the crap out of it. <laughs> so that's what I like to do in my downtime. Um, one of the things that, that I've done uh, recently is I uh, put together just a one-page site called makefastsites.com. And uh, it was kind of in response to uh, the <laughs> AMP kind of taking over things in, in a lot of places and, and just the idea that you don't actually need AMP to have a good site and have a fast site. And so um, if you visit that site that has, it, it's, it's both an example because I'm doing all the things that I talk about on there, but it's, but it's also has the top five things that uh, if people would just do, if webmasters and SEOs would just do to their site, they would have a, a pretty fast site and, and uh, wouldn't be needing to make everything into an AMP page uh, these days. So the, uh, what I'm talking about today is measuring campaign performance. And, and typically, uh, people will do these great campaigns. They'll come up with an awesome, say, content marketing campaign. They'll, they'll have different ways they want to distribute it. And all this time and effort goes into it. And, um, and actually, I can hear some people, so maybe I don't know if we need to mute. mute. <laughs> um, and, and typically, with uh, these campaigns, all this effort goes into it, but there isn't any effort into how it's actually going to uh, be reported, how they're going to be able to see uh, how well it performs. And instead, they're kind of left with, well, I think we saw an uptick in signups, or, or you know, I think we saw an uptick in, in traffic, but you can't actually... Uh, attribute it to that specific campaign. And so that's what I'm going to be focusing on today is, is showing you the, the core ways that you can, from the onset, make sure that you're tracking everything uh, so that you can claim responsibility for that work that you did and, of course, um, present that to, say, your boss or your manager and say, look, we did this campaign, we put a lot of effort into it, and and these were the results and it was awesome and maybe let's try to do something similar again. And so whenever you're beginning uh, a particular campaign, you, you always have certain KPIs. Uh, again, a lot of times people will, won't even think about these until the other side or maybe they know that they wanna have more leads, or they know they wanna have more traffic, but they aren't setting things up so they can actually uh, track that. And so KPIs, uh, these are the typical ones. These are the reasons uh, typically why people will, will run certain campaigns. Uh, they might want to have somebody download a white paper. They might want to have somebody purchase something. might be uh, an affiliate push, and you want to track how many people are actually clicking on those links from the things that you're doing maybe outside of your site. So once you identify those, the, the best way, I believe, uh, and simplest way, at least for most campaigns, is to actually just set up campaign perimeters. Uh, the the other term for this is campaign variables. So you may have heard of campaign variables, but Google has uh, shifted that to calling it campaign perimeters. And what's great about that is these work with offsite links and even onsite links. So links you have on your site or or links that you are um, putting outside uh, of your site that are coming in, you can add these perimeters and if you're using Google Analytics, and that is an assumption for this entire presentation is that you're using Google Analytics, uh, then you're gonna be able to see how well those campaigns are performing and have the correct attribution. And so uh, if, uh, if you don't know how to create campaign perimeters, then we created this super simple site called GA Config. If you go to gaconfig.com, then it has a uh, URL builder and uh, it is as simple as what is what is the link that you're linking to and what is the campaign source medium and, and name and so for example if I were doing an email campaign for this particular event then my source would be from a newsletter that I'm sending out 
and the medium would be the email because that's how I'm actually sending it. And then the name would actually be uh, the actual campaign name. And, and so in this case, it would be like the April 2017 conference. And what that ends up doing is it creates this really long URL, uh, which is uh, kind of, uh, you know, hard to keep track of. And so the, the best thing to do with this really long URL is to shorten it. And typically what, what I like to do is uh, I like to shorten it with an open source app called URLs. And I like it both because it's open source, but also because it is uh, something I can install on my own uh, hosting server. And so it's, it's something as simple as WordPress, maybe even simpler uh, to some people. And, and so, and I like having control over my own uh, URL shortener versus uh, you could still go to Bitly. Most people go to Bitly, but eventually, depending on the volume that you have, that costs money. And if you use the free version, you can't actually uh, sp uh, specify all the times the the actual uh, word that you want to use or phrase you want to use because it's probably already been used. And so that's another reason why I like to use URLs and, and host my own because one, it's free, and two, I can make any type of short links that I want. But Bitly and Google, they, those are both great. Uh, if you don't want to do it yourself and, and or even don't know how to do that. So, you know, go for Bitly, go for Google. And so this is what it looks like in URLs. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a gorgeous interface, <laughs> but it works and it works really well. And so what I would do is I would take that long URL and then I would give it my custom uh, short URL, URL name and go ahead and shorten that. And, and again, if you're using Bitly or something like that on the, the free or, or low cost version, Typically, what you want to use for that custom short URL has been used a long time ago, and, and you won't be able to, to use that yourself. It'll have to be something that's either uh, doesn't make any sense or is really long. And, and then what you do is you take that link and you use it for everything that you're doing. And uh, where this originally came from was Google AdWords. And AdWords is uh, they created that so you could actually track your campaigns and then it became obvious that you could actually use these not just with paid campaigns. And that's where this kind of took off. And you can use them with social posts. You can use it with newsletters like I was talking about. So if I send out an email newsletter, you can put it there. Uh, but you can also use it with offline collateral. And, and so I'll give you some examples in a second of that. But you can use these particular links on, say, a, a brochure or a handout at a conference. And that way you can get attribution. Um, from those links and whether that ends up um, achieving the goals or KPIs that you want. And you can know that that came from uh, you going to that particular conference, having that exhibit and handing out that particular piece of paper because it has a unique short URL with those campaign parameters. And so uh, I did this uh, last night and, and this was the link that I just showed you that, that I had made. And, and so this is the most typical you know, use, I think pretty much Anybody and everybody who is is on right now has seen this. This is a, a pretty normal thing. Uh, but you can also use it in, say, white papers. And, and so since PDFs have uh, the ability to have calls to action and support linking, then you could put that within a link. Uh, if you look at the bottom right, that tap clicks could be a link that also is actually using that short URL or even that the uh, long one because you can't see it. And the way we've used it is when we go to uh, conferences, we usually have something that we might hand out or a flyer or, or whatever event it might be, then you we typically will create that short link and that'll let us know that uh, whatever signups and whatever traffic that we get uh, came from that particular event. And that's really important, particularly when we think about having to report to our boss or, or report to our manager because it's, generally pretty hard to know what the, what the ROI is from events, particularly ones that are offline in a sense. And so uh, these can be really helpful offline to be able to let you know online how that actually performed. And then, and then if you can show that, then the result's gonna be that you're gonna get a bigger budget, you're gonna be able to go back to that show or do other shows, and you'll know which ones actually perform and, and do the best for you. So when you're doing this, uh, Another thing that people do, so so if this is something you are familiar with and you've done this, it doesn't mean that maybe you're doing it right. And, and so every single time 
I set up a campaign like this. I always uh, go into into GA Google Analytics and and test it in in their real time view. Now, for some of you, you may not see anything, and you may think it's not working, and that's that's because you set it up maybe because of your IP or your account is logged in, and so it doesn't count it. So you need to make sure that that you are accessing it. Uh, from a browser, or you know, you're not logged into GA, or there's not an IP block from you to um, make sure it's actually working. Because uh, I have found myself in that particular position. So, um, making sure that that's taken care of, always test in real time, and, and to be able to actually see that this that it's working. It's the easiest way uh, to find out almost immediately. And then once you have that set up, then you can go in uh, to the acquisition section of of GA and go into the all campaign section. And that's where you can actually dig into uh, how well something performed. You can uh, associate it with e-commerce and goals. Uh, and, and so it's, it's a great way to go and say, this show, this event, this content marketing campaign, uh, even these email newsletters or, or series that we did resulted in this type of uh, performance, whatever your KPIs might be. So the the other thing I really like to do are uh, event triggers. Uh, and event triggers are, are essentially uh, actions that are taken on your site that can also uh, apply uh, attribution or show that, that you've reached a particular uh, KPI. And then you can associate those with goals. And if, in, in these event types, there's all kinds of event types that you can have. And some of the most typical ones are the ones I'm showing right now. You can have uh, keeping track of, say, uh, affiliate links and knowing that uh, typically I would do it as a partner link and I would actually have the name, which would be uh, an example I'm going to show in a minute, Drobo. Uh, and you can also use it for, for other type of actions. So if you want to keep track of how many people are coming in and doing uh, rating things, if you want to keep track of which contact forms people are actually using or which sign-up forms people are using, then what you can do is you can have unique uh, action code for, for each of those on different pages. And that's gonna actually let you know um, which forms, uh, which links people are doing that are the most effective because otherwise, you're, all you're gonna know is that if you have the same form, you have the same action on every page, you're not gonna know which page that's coming from. But if you use something like event tracking, then that will actually say, oh, it, this is the page that, or the landing page in this case, that's getting the most response. And, and so therefore, uh, I want to drive more traffic to that page, and I probably want to try to build more landing pages based on that page. And then you may actually want to consider dropping other pages that aren't as effective. So in order to, to set up event tracking, there are two different ways, and it really depends on how you've set up your tracking with Google Analytics. And so the, the first way is uh, the, the most typical way, although that's starting to change now, but that is, that's with the asynchronous tracking from Google Analytics. And then the second way is with Google Tag Manager, and that is a completely different way uh, of setting up. And so I'm gonna show you the difference between the two. Um, the first one, if you're doing asynchronous tracking, which is actually just dropping in the JavaScript code from GA onto your site, then what you'll want to do is you'll you'll want to set it up the way I'm going to show you right here. And so if you go to gaconfig.com slash event tracking, that will take you to uh, a page that basically has a list of all those events I just showed you before. And then if you click on one of those, it will give you this particular form for it. So in this example, we have a file download event tracking. And uh, if you look at the form, it has category, action, and label. And so in this case, I'm trying to track uh, how many people are coming in and actually downloading this file. And it could be like a white paper in this case. And so category or downloads, the action is a click, uh, and, and then the label is the white paper. And so it will let me know how many people are actually downloading that uh, white paper from that particular uh, link and and so when you enter that it gives you the code that you would put into your uh, anchor uh, attribute and and so you'll see at the bottom it kind of has a little example 
and it's just a piece of JavaScript that just kind of runs uh, when somebody clicks on your site. Now, for, for GTM, for Google Tag Manager, it's different. And, and depending on how you like to do things, it's, it could also be seen as also being better. The, the issue with going the Google Analytics uh, tracking code route is that you, have, you have to actually uh, go in and, and update, manually update the link on, for every link on the pages. So you're actually changing the HTML on the page. The beauty of, of Tag Manager is that you do everything on Tag Manager. Uh, once you have the Tag Manager code in there, then you can set up anything for any page, anywhere, uh, and give it any type of action. And so that's why, that's one of the many reasons why many people are moving to uh, GTM, because it's just so much easier to use. And so uh, if you go to this link, this actually goes to a Google help doc, um, raven.link slash GTM events will take you to the Google, Google Help Doc that will uh, walk you through how to set up events on Google Tag Manager. Uh, but I have a couple screenshots here just kind of give you an idea of what that looks like. And essentially, you're going to set up uh, a what's called a tag and a trigger. And it's very, very similar. And so here I'm setting up in GTM uh, an, an event type. And then I'm, I'm setting the same type of parameters, in this case, uh, I gave the affiliate example earlier, which was uh, for affiliate links, I usually just call it partner, and, and then the action is a click, and then, and then it's the actual partner itself. In this case, it might be a link to Drobo or Drobo on Amazon or something like that. And then you would set up the trigger, and, and, and basically what I did here was I made it, instead of doing it page-based, you can actually make it so that any links that are clicked on your site. And in my case, um, the URL link that links out is usually uh, has the Drobo in it. And so that's what I actually use for that. Make it so that any links that are clicked on your site, and in my case. Um, the next one are, uh, that the, the one of the things that I want to um, uh, show you is just that the great thing about events and event tracking is uh, similar to structured data and other things like that, it's completely invisible. It's just a way of tracking something invisibly so that you can report on it later. And so here is an example of an article that has that affiliate link, and it's just regular, regular, looks the same. So uh, events are great also because you can make goals based on those events. And so you can start building off of, of these particular um, ways of, of tracking and, and then come up with um, basically this event led to this goal and this goal has this particular value. Uh, and so you can start uh, looking uh, closer at actual ROI as opposed to just an action that took place. And so if you're in Google Analytics, you can go into uh, your goals and then one of the options is that you can set that event and, and then set up the rest of it. So everything works together seamlessly. Uh, and, and if you do this right, you're going to be able to uh, pull out that data from your campaign easily and really effortlessly and, and be able to uh, bring that to your manager. And then if you're in GA, after you set up those events, the section you would go to would be behavior, and then you go into the events section, and you can essentially mine or filter down to whatever campaign it was that, that or event that you were trying to track. And so... It's it's not just uh, with links. You can you can do campaign tracking uh, similarly with with call tracking too. So I'm not going to go uh, into this because uh, that's a whole other story. Um, but uh, call tracking is another one uh, that we like to use, particularly on brochures and things that are offline, not just not just online, like say ads or or the footer of a site. And so you can combine all of these things to find out uh, not only uh, the uh, how well a campaign did, but even what people use to uh, reach out and uh, for that pet campaign. Some people are going to be more comfortable with calling. Some people are more, more comfortable about just going to your site and interacting uh, with your marketing page. And then the, the last part is when it all boils down. This is when you have to put everything together and and you want it to be easy easily put it together uh ga does all most of the the heavy lifting once you set it up like this 
uh, and then you can use uh, a service uh, like uh, Raven to be able to just put together uh, your campaigns and your events and report that. Um, Raven's really good for the essential reporting for the if you're using GA and and a handful of, of different data connections. And uh, however, if if you are a larger agency or you're like an enterprise customer, uh, a lot of people have had a lot of success using tap clicks because they have over 150 data connections and including call rail for uh, call tracking. Um, but those, that's how you bring it all home. That's how you make yourself look really good, uh, whether it be to your client or to your boss. That's it. Thank you.